that has been burning in my spirit. Hear me. Come on, what up, what up? Come on in the room. Swerving in my spirit. I'm telling you, I'm on. What up, what up? Parents go. What's happening? God bless you. Invite your followers. What up, what up, Miss Tamika? God bless you. Invite your followers. I'm telling you, I've been trying to get this word out since 7 o'clock. Everything started messing up. All of my devices. Everything started messing up. What up, what up, what up? God bless you. God bless you. Come on, y'all rock with me. Because this word is in my spirit. Hey, Apostle Larry, I'm telling you, this word has been in my spirit for two days. And tonight I could not contain it. It was exploding in my spirit, y'all. Come on, you know what I'm saying? It's not nothing we heard, but God was talking to me about this. Come on, roll with me. Just rock with me for a minute. Come on. Come on. Hey, hey. Come on, come on. Amen. Wasn't that awesome? Come on, come on. Invite your followers. Anybody that say that they are hashtag Anybody that said that they are apostolic takeover? Anybody look when they talk about this generation don't have no age. It is a generation that God is raising up. Come on, I'm telling you, I feel the fire of God on this thing, y'all. Hallelujah. What up, Miss Karen? God bless you. Christy and God, Christine, God bless you. Hashtag I am that nation. God bless you, Apostle Larry. It's good that you are. I'm telling you. God is doing something in this time and season. Can y'all just rock with me for a minute? I gotta turn this up. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Come on, y'all, come on. What's up, me? God bless you. Nashville, God bless you.
Mr. DJ, so y'all know I'm into some music. But check it out. God bless everybody for coming on. God bless everybody. Come on. No flesh will glory in his presence tonight. Come on, just got to get that up. Come on. No flesh will glory in his presence tonight. Come on. Come on. Hey. No flesh will glory in his presence tonight. No flesh. No flesh. No flesh will glory in his presence tonight. Check it out. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it be my bed music. So look, check it out, y'all. I'm hyped because I feel like this word is fire in my spirit. So let me tell you what what went down. So a couple of days ago, the Lord began to talk to me. Look, I, look, my printer broke. I couldn't even print the document. The enemy did not want me to speak this word. He did not want me to release this word. So I had to use my phone. Come on, hear what I'm saying. I have been on my computer for two hours, two and a half hours since seven o'clock trying to get this thing together. But let me tell you something. He wasn't going to stop it. But check it out. So here we go. So a couple of days ago, the Lord began to talk to me. Well, let me put it like this. A couple of, of, of a month ago, the Lord said to me, daughter, I am, there's a new move that's on its way. I said, what do you mean, Father? He said, what new moon? He said, he never told me what it was. Because remember, we're just in a move that he's in, that we're in now. Come on, hear what I'm saying. We're in a move that he just instituted. Now we're in a new move. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Boom, shaka -laka. Can I get some boom, shaka -laka booms on here? So we're in a new move. That nobody really knows what to do in it. Nobody knows how it's moving, how it's functioning, what is he doing, how is he going to do it. We just know that God is, has a new move that's happening right now, okay? Can I get some boom shaka laka booms? Okay. So check it out. So God began to talk to me about David. So I'm writing this book. I'm working on my book, right? So the Lord began to talk to me. Hear what I'm saying about David. And we know we've heard the story of David. We don't heard David flip it, smack it up, rub it down, turn it around a thousand times. I think we don't turn David inside out, outside in, top to bottom. We don't discover everything about David. But you know the difference is this: when God gives you a hot word about David, okay? So can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all go to First Kings and nineteen? Now this is very important. I'm reading this to you because I'm setting a foundation. All right, you hear what I'm saying? I'm setting a foundation. Look, if you're not of this generation that God is doing right now, you ain't going to hear it by the Spirit. Come on here. So I don't expect you to be on. But for those that what God is doing something in this generation and the promises that he has made concerning you years and years and years, come on, listen to what I'm saying. I'm hyped, y'all. I'm hyped. It feel like I done went out there and got blown for days, but I'm blown off of Jesus. Hear what I'm saying? The presence of the Lord. So here, God is saying something to this generation. And he's saying something. So this, this rock with me with this. Can y'all just rock with me on here? So 1 Kings 19, it says, Ahab reported to Jezebel everything that Elijah had done. Let me just drop this for a minute. So everything that Elijah had done, including massacring the prophets. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Jezebel immediately sent a messenger to Elijah with her threat. The God, the gods will get you for this and I'll get even with you by this time tomorrow. I love this. By this time tomorrow. Hold on to that. Man, I love it when I read the word of God. Some revelation this there. By this time tomorrow, you'll be dead as many as one of those prophets. Verse 3 through 5. When Elijah saw how things were, he ran for dear life to Beersheba. Far in the south of Judah, Judah, I'm sorry. He left his young servant there and then went on to the desert another day's journey. He came to a long broom brush bush and collapsed in his shade, wanting to wanting <coughs> excuse me, in the worst way to be done with it all, to just die. Enough of this, God. 
Take my life. I really, I'm ready to join my ancestors in the grave. Exhausted, he fell asleep under the loom, long bloom brush. Now I just want to stop right there. I just want to stop right there. If you want me to pray for you, then you need to listen to this scope. Listen, what's up? What up? Look, check it out. So here is Elijah. He done defeated the prophets. Come on, how many of y'all know? Y'all be sent somewhere. Y'all done laid hands on people. Y'all done cast out devils. Y'all done prophesied to your, to your, you're tired of talking. Come on, hear what I'm saying. You done said, thus said the Lord. God said, the grace of God. Yahweh says, you gonna do this. The Lord says, you done did all of this. Come on here. And then the very enemy comes along and tries to stop you. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Stop you from moving in the things of God by his threats. Come on here. So we know that when the enemy comes after we done done great exploits with God, the enemy comes. Come on, he comes immediately. Why? To shake our confidence. Come on here. To bust us in our head. To make us think that we missed it. That it's not God. We're in trouble. All these crazy thoughts that we have in our head. Come on, we hear this. And then until you go, you try to go somewhere and hide. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want any. I'm telling you, y'all forgive me because I feel the fire of God on this. You don't want to talk to anybody. You be critiquing yourself. Well, how did I sound? Come on here. Was it okay? Did I miss it? Was it you, God? God, did I do everything? you told me to do. God, did I say everything that you told me to say? So here's Elijah. You're tired. You done prophesied to 7,000 people and you still, people are healed. People are delivered. They telling you how blessed they are, but you still questioning who you are because the enemy comes quickly to shake your confidence in God. So let's move on. Let's move on. Suddenly an angel shook him away and said, get up and eat. Verse six. He looked around and to his surprise, right by his head were a loaf of bread baked on some coals and a jug of water. He ate the meal and went back to sleep. Apostle Kelly, what's up? Apostle Tamika, what's up? So he says, um, the angel, okay, so verse 8, he got up, ate and drank his field and set out. Nourished by the meal, he walked 40 days and nights all the way to a mountain of God, to Hebron. When he got there, he crawled into a cave and went to sleep. Okay, let me let me move on. Hey, overseer of the Lord, God bless you. The, then the word of the Lord came to him. So Elijah... What are you doing here? Come on, let me bag up. Pump the brakes. Let me put, look, look, let me drop it right here. So here you are. You done did all these exploits for God. Come on here. Now you're going to try to go somewhere. Well, I ain't going to prophesy no more. I'm not going to do these things anymore. I'm not going to talk about God anymore because you nobody celebrate me. Look, everybody, I feel like I'm being attacked. I feel and I'm thinking that I'm being attacked. So I'm going to go hide in the cave. And so God comes to you and to you and say, you, whatever your name is, why are you in this cave? What are you doing here? Come on here and I'm saying, why are you hiding in the cave? You just bust a thousand, you just bust and killed a thousand prophets. Now you sitting up here hiding in the cave because one demonic spirit, one voice, one voice that seemed like it had some authority. Come on, can I get a boom shot to like a boom? Made you feel like you had no authority. Made you feel like you weren't nothing. Made you feel like you had no power, no authority. You were not successful. Come on here. One voice, one sound that overrode what God has showed, showed you to do. You have walked excuse me, in signs and wonders and miracles. Now all of a sudden a spirit comes to you and you won't get punked down. What? God says, what are you doing? Get up. What are you doing? Come out of that cave. Why are you here, Elijah? Why are you here, sister? Why are you here, brother? You done did all these things. People are calling you and telling you how blessed God was. How, how blessed that um that you were that they were by your ministry how that word that you released was for them how that word changed your life how how changed their life how that word brought increase how that word came to pass now you got ten thousand people telling you that and then one voice come on ooh, come on what I'm here saying y'all one voice comes along and all of a sudden. 
sudden you get scared and you go run in a cave. You go hide. It shuts you down. It makes you think you are insignificant. It makes you think that you have no power. Nobody cares about me. Come on here. It begins to deal with every little emotion that's in you that you thought that you had got delivered from. But come on, let me move on. So the question being to you, why are, what are you doing and why are you here? Come on, hear what I'm saying, y'all. Verse 10. Here's Elijah. Come on. They, they, come on. This is what we say to God. Well, God, I've been working my heart out for the God of the angel of the army, said Elijah. The people of Israel have abandoned your covenant, destroyed the places of worship, and murdered your prophets. I'm the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me. Let me say something to you. God has raised you up to come in and begin to he got you don't think God knew that they destroyed that they're broken his covenant? You don't think God didn't know that that uh be what else did he say? He said that the people of Israel had tore down and destroyed the places of worship, that they murdered the prophets. You don't think God didn't know that? Come on here. You don't think God know that these people are here talking about you? You don't think that God knows that they have, uh, they're lying, that they're manipulating, that they're saying that they serve God on one minute, and in the, in the next minute, they, they're worshiping idols, they're getting high, come on here, they lying, they're cheating, you don't think God knows that? So the question being for you, why are you in this cave? You don't think I know what's happening? Why do you think I raised you up? Come on here. Why do you think I raised you up? Why do you think I raised you up? Why? Because I sent you to tear down which the enemy destroyed. But because of one voice, come on here what I'm saying. One sound, one familiar voice, you became afraid and went and hid in the cave. Come on, all right. Y'all y'all flowing with me? Can I get some boom shaka locka booms on there? Can I get some boom shaka locka booms? Come on, somebody. Come on, hear what I'm saying here. Verse 11 through 12 says, Then he was told, Go stand on the mountain at attention before God. God will pass by. Then listen, now what he said, look. He's want to say, you cave dwellers. Now, God's still trying to tell him, dude, come on out. He's still, come on out the cave. Come on. Come on, Elijah. Come on, sister. Come on, brother, out the cave. I'm going to show you that I'm with you. Come on. I'm going to look. I'm going to show you that I'm with you. I'm going to give you dreams. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to send somebody to prophesy to you. I'm going to send somebody to encourage you. So I, but I just need you to come out the cave. Come on here. He says a hurricane wind ripped through the mountains and shattered the rocks before God. But God wasn't to be found in the wind. And the wind, after the wind, an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, the fire, but God wasn't in the fire. And after the fire, a gentle and quiet whisper. Can I just stop right there? God is sending Look, the things of the old will no longer work anymore. Come on, hear what I'm saying. The things of the old, the old systems, the old wineskin, the old religious system, come on, will no longer work. Come on, God is, God is raising you up. He says, look, I'm going to show you some. Come on, y'all. I get some revelation coming. He says, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to release to you something nobody else hasn't heard. I'm going to show you a sound that I have not released to that old system, to that old wine thing. I'm going to release to you a voice, a power that has authority. Come on here. So that when Jezebel, hallelujah, God bless you, sister, that when Jezebel began to speak or familiar voice began to speak or stranger voice began to speak to you, come on here. It won't affect you. Come on. And you'll just keep on moving because the voice that I'm releasing, it hasn't heard before. It's a voice that has power. It's a voice that has authority. And when it speaks, it makes that spirit submit and humble itself and makes it crumble and fear God. Come on, hear what I'm saying. All right. All right. Uh, 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 come on. Can, can, can I get a boom shaka like a boom? What's happening? Can I get some hearts on, on Periscope? What's up? Nobody out there. What's happening? Y'all come on. Give me some hearts up in here. If this is blessing, y'all, give me some hearts. Say, give me some hashtag. I am that nation. Come on. Hook a sister up here. <clears throat> so, verse 13 and 14. When Elijah heard the quiet voice, he muffled his face with his great cloak, went, went to the mouth of the cave, and stood there. Now, look at here. Can I just, can I, I just want to stop there. At 
after Elijah heard the voice, the new sound, what God was releasing into the region for this generation or for this generation, he still went back into the cave. Come on here. He didn't go so deep into the cave, but he stood at the mouth of the cave. Come on. After receiving that revelation, some of you all, God has released great revelation to you. Some of you, God has released prophetic words. Some of you, God has said, y'all going to the nations. Some of you, God says, I raised you up for leaders. I raised you up for this and I raised you up for that. But because you're still not sure, come on here, because somewhere in your heart, somewhere in your mind, you still hear that voice of the enemy. You still have the fear of that voice. So you run just, you know, you're not as deep in the cave, but you're at the mouth of the cave. God is saying, come out the cave. Come on here. You, because you're still afraid. You're still not sure. You still don't have confidence, but God is building up your confidence tonight. Come out the cave, y'all. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come out the cave. Okay, let me move on. And a quiet voice said to Elijah, Now tell me, what are you doing here? Hear what I'm saying. So God, after God, now let me share something to you. We know God is not illiterate. We know God is not bipolar. We know God is not double-minded. We know God is not crazy. We know God doesn't sleep. And here we go. So he's asking Elijah, after he, Elijah done told him what he was going, why he was in the cave. Come on, hear what I'm saying. After he done told Elijah, this is what I'm doing, dude. I'm releasing a new sound. I'm releasing new vision. I'm releasing new revelations. I'm releasing a new system. Come on here. I'm releasing a new voice in this in this region that will kill the demonic spirits that sits on principal that sits on thrones that will release a generation and set them free that will cut the princes and the print and the uh principalities over regions that will cause my people to not worship me that will cause my people not to seek my face that will cause my people to reject me and to not obey me come on he says I'm releasing that sound but here's Elijah well well, I, 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 well, uh, uh, the bishop ain't, the bishop ain't blessing me. Come on here. Uh, 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 the, 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 uh, 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 my pastor ain't said I can go yet, but you sitting there with the goods. Come on here. You're sitting there with the power. You're, you're the one that there's a generation that's waiting on you to come in and begin to speak what God is saying. So you're sitting there because at the mouth, you're sitting there. He says, after he told Elijah, Elijah, look, come on, come on. He says, Elijah, now that I heard what you said, come on, hear what I'm saying. He said, you done told me why you were here. Hey, hello, can I get a boom shakalaka? He says, and then I told you, dude, come, just come out the cave. He says, because I'm going to release something new to you. Something fresh, something that Jezebel or the demonic spirits of this time and the people of this time have never experienced. They have never experienced my love in this measure. They have never experienced my power, power, demonstration. Come on here. He says, so I'm releasing something to you, but I need you to come out the cage, Elijah. So he begins, he says, look, check it out. He says, okay, I'm just reiterating. He says, Elijah, come on, dude. So he goes. Comes out, God speaks to him. He's looking for God in the old way, in the old system. But God says, no, 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 I'm not rocking like that anymore. He says, I'm doing something new for this generation. I'm releasing something fresh, something exciting. He says, I'm relaunching new things. I'm, I'm old things. He says, I'm relaunching some people's ministries. I'm relaunching, I'm giving them a refreshing and a refilling. Can I just prophesy? He says, some of y'all are tired. Some of y'all are weary. Some of y'all have left churches and want to leave churches. You hate going to churches. Why? Because there's no fresh move. There's no fresh sound. There's nothing fresh in these churches. But God says, if you just come out to the cave, he said, just come out for a minute. He says, I want to show you something. I'm not in that which was. I'm not in that which used to be. That used to work. He says, I'm not even in the thing that you think that you work when you used to use it before. He says, but I, he says, I'm in that still quiet voice. That's that fresh manner, that fresh revelation, that fresh sound. Come on, hear what I'm saying, man, I feel this thing. I feel God. So verse 15 through 18, God said, excuse me, I'm sorry, let me roll back up here. Verse 13 to 14, Elijah said it again. I've been working my heart out for God, the God of the God of angel of the armies, because the people of Israel.
Israel have abandoned your covenant, destroyed the places of worship, and murdered your prophets. I'm the only one left. Now they're trying to kill me. Now, here, now wait a minute. I, anybody, can somebody help me? Can, any, can, can I just get anybody to help me? Is God deaf? I just want to know. Is God? Do God need his people to lay hands on so he can hear? Come on, I just want to know. Do we have to, you know... Uh, stick, you know, and put our hands in the ears of God so God can hear. So he already, number one, God already knew that the people had already tore down the places of worship. He already knew they had broke the covenant. He already knew this. So Elijah, you know, God is kind of cynical. You, you know, God, God be playing tricks on, you know what I mean? Sometimes God be, you know, God is like a for real parent. God would challenge you with stuff to make you think. So here's Elijah. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Elijah is already, God already knew what's going on. So he raised up Elijah. Come on. So he could go and deal with these things. Hear what I'm saying. So now Elijah going to tell God what's going on. <laughs> Come on, hear what I'm saying. So this is what I'm saying to you. So after all of that God had did for Elijah, then Elijah proceeds to tell him the same thing again. And God's like, what's wrong with you, dude? Come on, hear what I'm saying. Come on, come on. Can I get a boom shakalaka? Can I get a hashtag I am that nation? So God is, and so Elijah proceeds to tell God the same thing again. He's like, dude, do I look stupid to you? Come on, how many times have y'all said this? God, I would do this, but I need license. Oh, no fear it's up on somebody's toe. God, I would do this, but I need to be ordained. Oh, no, I'm stepping on somebody's toe. God, I would do this if my pastor, hear what I'm saying? I'm not telling anybody to be rebellious or not submit to your leaders. Don't, don't even play me like that. I, I believe in order. Come on here. You, but we say this. Well, God, I can't do this because we come up with a thousand things. Well, God, I can't do this because. Well, God, I can't do this because of this. Well, God, God already knows this. Come on, people. It's you. Come out the cave. Okay, let me move on. So we, so he says, he says, uh, he says, uh, okay, God, thank you, Jesus. He says, verse 15 through 18. Come on, come on. Can I get a, can I get a boom, shaka, like a boom? Can I get a boom, shaka, like a boom? Periscope, can I just get some hearts? Can anybody just heart me up a little bit? Can somebody just heart me up a little bit? A pre, come on, cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to get some of that. Oh man. So verse 15 through 18 says, go back. The way you came through the desert to Damascus. And when you get there, anoint Hazel. And you know who that is. That's Hazel Jackson. Okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Make him king over Amron. Am Armin. And then anoint Jehu, son of Nish Nishman. Make him king over Israel. Finally, anoint Elisha, son of, you know that cat name. I say from Detroit. From Abel. To succeed you as prophet, anyone who escapes death by Hazel will be killed by Jehu. And anyone who escapes death by Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Meanwhile, I'm preserving myself 7,000 souls who knees have not bowed to the God of Baal. The mouths that haven't kissed this image. All right. Now, here we go. Now, let me turn this light on back. You just bear with me for a minute. So, check it out. So here we go. I just want to let you know you ain't by yourself. Come on here. You are not by yourself. You think that you're only one. And it's the enemy to make you think you in here by yourself in your cave. Come on. But if you just flick the light on. Hello, somebody. If you just flick the light on. What is the light? The light of the living God. If you flick is on, you'll find out there's a lot of y'all in the cave. Come on. But God is saying, come out the cave. There's a lot of us who have not bowed down. There's a lot of us that God has raised up and is raising up for this season with a new sound, a new voice, a new uh, revelation. Come on here to catch a generation, to shift it and change it that will begin to worship the Lord. See, come on here. Now, you just read this. The reason Elijah had to come out to cave, number one, he had to anoint Jehu. He had to anoint Hazel. Come on here. He had to go find Elisha. That was the more major things because Jehu killed he said, Jehu killed Jezebel. Come on here. There are people that are waiting on you. Why? Because you ain't coming because you in the cave. Matter of fact, you done came a little bit out the cave. You're standing at the mouth of the cave. Come on here. You're standing at the mouth of the cave. So let me go on. <clears throat> 
Verse 19, Elijah went straight out and found Elisha, son of Sabbath, in a field where there were 12 pairs of yoke oxen at work plowing. Elijah was in charge of the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw the cloak over him. Elijah, ooh, that's some good revelation. I'm going to have to go back and study that right there. Yep, yep. That's some revelation between me and the Lord. Elisha <clears throat> deserted the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye. Then I'll follow you. Go ahead, said Elijah, but mind, but mind you, <clears throat> don't forget what I've just done to you. So 21, so Elijah left. He took his yoke of oxen and butchered them. He made a fire. <clears throat> Fire with the plow and tackled the boil with the meat. A true farewell meal for the family. Then he left and followed Elijah, be becoming his right-hand man. What up, some revelation? And I'm, I saw something in there. So here, God, God, his people are waiting on you to come. He said he found Elisha in the field. Come on here. How I many you can't find nobody if you're in the cave? Come on, come out the cave. You can't find nobody if you're in the cave. Come on, hear what I'm saying. You cannot find anybody if you're in the cave. So I ask you, as God asked Elijah, why are you here? Come on here. Because God already knows what's going on. Elijah was telling God like God didn't know what was happening. Come on. He was talking to God. God, you stupid. You don't see this. God, you don't see like I always say, sometimes I go to churches and it'd be so many demons in the house. I'm like, do anybody see the gorilla hanging from the chandelier? And God knows the gorilla is there. That's why he sent me there. Come on, he sent me there. I ain't got to let them know that I'm here to uh, pray against that spirit that's in that house so they can get some liberty and freedom beyond the move. I ain't got to come and say, oh, Sonia's here. I ain't got to do that. Come on, hear what I'm saying. But there are people are waiting on you to come. Somebody, There's a Jehu and there's a Hazel and there's an Elisha waiting on you to come out and begin to minister to them. But you in the cave. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to David and his 400 men. Hey, come on. Can I get some? Hey, come on. Get some. Hey, come on. So 1 Samuel 22, David therefore departed there and escaped to the cave of Adullah. So when the bro when his brothers and all his father's house heard it, they went down there and everyone who was in distress, come on, hear what I'm saying. Everyone who was in debt and everyone who was discontent gathered to him. Now, I know, <clears throat> let me share something with you. Even while you're in the cave, the people will find you. Come on here. Now, I know this is an oxymoron because I'm telling you to come out. But even in the cave, there are a lot of people who are in distress. Come on. They're waiting on you. Come on here. That Elijah was standing at the mouth, but God wants you to come out. God wants you to come out because there are people who are in distress. Come on here. So they're running into the cave because they find the comfort there. But let me share some. I know there are people that say you you get birthed in the cave but let me tell you something you do get birthed in the cave but you need to come out of the cave come on here there are people that are waiting on you they are the ones that are distressed come on there they are they are uh, hold on let me move on down here they are uh distressed come on they they are um they are in debt and everyone who was discontented, they're looking for you. Come on. They already know what it's like to be in a cave. But they're waiting on you to come out and say, this is the plan. This is what God is saying. This is how God wants to do it. And he needs you to come out the cave to do it. Now, what I loved about that, it was 400 men. And that's what I looked at. It was, let me tell you something. David in that place, in that place of cave dwelling. Now, even if you was in that cave, come on, you still were ministering, right? You still was doing the thing. You were still hiding out. You didn't want anybody to know that you had a large, that you had a ministry. Come on here. You didn't want anybody to know. But God says, come on, bring those ones that are distressed out. Come on, bring the ones who are dead this out. Bring the ones who are discontent and bring them out. Come on. Because they will be the ones that I'm going to use to shift this region. They're going to be the ones that are warriors that I raise up that will not bow down to Jezebel. That will not back up off of Jezebel. Come on here. I just wanted to read to you the, the, the meaning, <clears throat> the number of 400. The number of 400 which is arrived by the multiple of 8 by 50 symbolizes biblically a divine perfect time period. So God, this is what I'm saying. It is time for you to come out the cave. The number 400, God was just talking about, it's, time, it's God's perfect time.
Miami. And it's time for you to come out the cave. Come on here. It's time for you to stop hiding. It's time for you to stop um, running and, and questioning who you are. It's time for you to step up into that place God has called you to be. It's time to cast down that voice that have told you that you'll never be nothing. You quit looking for everybody trying to build a mega church and a mega ministry. How about just let's build a mega place for God. Let's build a mega platform for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, hear what I'm saying. And let me share something with you on this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This is um Acts 7 and 1. This is when Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. So the number 400 represents a, a period of time that was God's perfect timing. Come on here. It says, the chief priest said, what do you have to say for yourself, Stephen? Stephen replied, friends, fathers, brothers, the glory of God appeared to our father Abraham when he was still in Mesopotamia before the move to Hebron and told him, leave your country and family and go to the land which I showed you. Y'all following me, right? So he left the country of the Chaldeans and moved to Hebron. And after the death of his father, he immigrated to the country where you now live. But God, but God gave him nothing, nothing so much as a foothold. He did promise to give the country to him and his son later on, even though Abraham had no son at the time. God let him know that his offspring would move into an alien country where they would be enslaved and brutalized for 400 years. But God, come on here, I will step in and take care of those enslaved and bring them out so they can worship me in this place. Come on here what I'm saying. And some translation says, I'm going to give them back their inheritance. Come on here. I'm going to give you back what the enemy has taken. I'm going to restore everything that he has stolen from you. Come on, but you got to come out the cave. Why are you in the cave? Why are you fearing that, well, maybe I missed it. Well, maybe I didn't hear it right. Well, maybe God didn't say it right. I don't look like them. Praise the Lord you don't look like them. I don't sound like them. Praise God you don't sound like them. God doesn't need a copycat or duplicate. The only person he wants us to duplicate is himself. The only Bible said Jesus, he says he went about making disciples. Come on, hear what I'm saying. So there's a time God says for this season and for this generation, God is pulling us out of the cave. He's pulling us out of our place that kept us in because we didn't wear robes and because we wore jeans instead of a long skirt. We wore gym shoes instead of heels and, 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 and whatever shoes men wear. We didn't wear ties and we didn't wear all this stuff. We said, what up, though, instead of hello. We said, we're going to rock this place instead of sound good. Come on here. We said, we're going to turn up instead of saying, man, we're going to praise the Lord. We say that God says, praise the Lord, because I'm changing the sound of this generation. I'm releasing a new sound for this new move of God. We're not going to sound the same. We're not going to be the same. We're not going to look the same. The only Excuse me. The only thing that's going to be the same is what we carry. The only thing that's going to be duplicate is what we carry. We're not going to look alike. We're not going to say it alike. We're going to begin to go in and tear down things that our ancestors and old systems that build up and erected. Come on here. That they thought was God. Old moves. Old ways. Now here I ain't rejecting nobody. Come on here what I'm saying. But God is saying I'm not in that old move. I'm not in the earthquake. Come on. Even though the earthquake. I'm not in the fire. Even though you still see fire. I'm not in the wind. Even though you see the wind blowing. But here I am right here. Releasing a new sound. Releasing new revelation. Releasing new words. Releasing understanding. Releasing a new power. So that when you go into regions. And when you begin to go into territories. That the enemy won't know who you are. Come on here. They won't know. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. That don't sound like the old system that we used to dust and beat down. That don't sound like the old system that we used to uh, hear and had no power and had no authority. That don't sound like the same sound that we had overtaken and overthrown. But God says they're releasing a new sound. And we say that old joker that sits on the print, that sits on the seat of authority, that caused God people to stop praising him, that have caused God's people to stop. 
cave and receive what God has for you. Come out the cave and hear what God has for you. Come out the cave because to get that fresh wind, that fresh sound, that fresh revelation, that fresh in feeling, that fresh fire that you can go to nations, that you can go to generations, that you can go and begin to decree and declare what thus saith the Lord. Say, so when the lions roar, who can help but prophesy? Prophesy, people. Cast out devils, y'all. Lay hands on y'all. Teach the word. Evangelize. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Do what God has called you to do. Come out the cave and do it. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you, I feel like, woo! Woo! Can I get a boom shaka like a boom up in here? Come out the cave. Amen. Hey, Prophet Scott, God bless you, man of God. Amen. I tell you, man, I feel the fire of God up on this. I am soaking wet. I tell you, I, I feel the fire of God up on this word. This move is a, is a move by God. This is God is saying it's time. It's a, it's, it's a perfect timing of God. Come out the cave, y'all. Come out the cave. Come out the cave. Come on, hear what I'm saying. Amen. God bless you all. Wow. I tell you, I'm sweating. I'm sweating bullets, y'all. God bless you all. Look. Hey, check it out. Uh, uh, uh. Check it out. I said I was going to do this So Gone Challenge. I said I was going to do it, but I, I, I don't think I'm going to do it. But check it out. So uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I think we're going to switch to Saturdays. I got to see if we can get a Saturday date. We're going to be teaching on prophecy and prophets. Okay, hey, what's happening? Hey, Thais, I ain't seen you in a while. What up, though? What up, though, everybody? God bless everybody. Hey, tell me where y'all from. Facebook, Periscope, where y'all from? Hey, God bless you, Mika. Looking for you. You keep saying you're coming. I don't see you. It's time to come out the cave. Thank you. God bless you, Michelle. Um, So we're going to be doing that for about, uh, oh, for about, we're going to be teaching on that for a minute. Canada, oh, Canada. God bless you, Allie, God's girl. Canada. Amen. I in November. The D. That's right. The D. So look. Um, um, setting the captives free. If you're in the Dallas, if you if you're in Alabama, if you're in Mississippi, Kansas, look, there's no place limited. Fly in. We're gonna be there for two days. Apostle Mark. Amen. Amen. Apostle Mark uh, May, Apostle Sonia Green, myself, and Prophet Rick Fair. There's going to be uh, miracles. There's going to be um, teaching and training on miracles and deliverance, as well as deliverance going forth, the prophetic word, as well as um, uh, Prophet Rick is going to teach you how to worship and, and warfare. Amen. And so it's going to be awesome. It's going to be October the 7th and 8th in the Dallas region. Um, um, so if you all living in Dallas or somewhere near, look, don't be scared to fly. Come on, you do everything else you want to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all did everything else y'all want to do. So come on and hang out with us. Y'all know it's going to be hype because you know I know I hate religious and I hate things being normal. I'm not normal. So I, God isn't normal. So we're not going to be normal. We're going to flow, but it's not going to be normal. Come on, hear what I'm saying. So October the 7th through 8th in Dallas. Setting is called Dallas, uh, Dallas setting the captives free. Dot eventbrite.com. It's only thirty dollars, really isn't a lot. And you get free, you get a meal with that, <clears throat> and you get some, you get some serious training and teaching. Come on, hear what I'm saying. So, come on and hang out with us if you don't have nothing to do. Um, and then on Saturdays, you know, come on and hang out. I'll, I'll let you know when we've it's going to be the Friday, Saturdays. Amen. It's going to either be Friday or Saturdays when we do what we do. Amen. So God bless you all. I pray that this word um, helped you and strengthened you. Come out the cave. And um, come on. And um, I felt that God is saying it's time for y'all to come out. Quit looking for God in systems that he's no longer operating in. Come on. Quit looking for God in ways that he's not moving. God is moving in a still small voice. And sometimes in a still small voice, there you, you can't just sit there and just hear what God is saying. You, you, have, to, you have to do something to change your ways. Amen. God is not moving in long uh, uh, liturgy anymore. He's not moving in things of old. He's moving... 
God is always doing something new. Can I share something with you? Even with this new move, if we don't continue to move with God, God is always doing something new. God is always refining, renewing new things. And if we don't continue to move with God, guess what? We will be the old systems and the old ways, stopping the new systems and the new ways from moving. So continue to walk and listen to what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I'm glad y'all hanging out with me. I pray that this bless you. Where y'all? That's right. Still small voice. Live nation. What up though? God bless you. Hey, Facebook. Tell me where y'all from. Ain't nobody put no cities up there. What's up? What's up? The only, only Michelle put up there. She's from the D. What up, Life Nation? God bless you. Where you call? Where you from, brother? Sister, I don't know which one you are. Where y'all from? Let me know. Y'all act like y'all scared from the D. What up, though? Come on. Y'all ain't like y'all. Ain't no, look, I promise you I'm not coming to y'all homes. I promise you. Florida, Detroit. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. I didn't get a chance to read that text, sis, but we've been praying for your son. Forever Eva. What's happening? Oakland in the house. Louisiana. Look, all y'all folks, y'all right there by Texas. Y'all need to come out and hang out with us. Come on, hang out with this. Wherever that city is, God bless it. <laughs> So God bless you. This is Apostle Sonia Green from the D, D Town. And also, too, we're going to be doing Apostolic Takeover in April the 21st. So y'all get ready for that. We're, we're preparing for that. And um, DMV, God bless you. I was trying, I, I told you I was going to try to get to your church. And I was out there, but I could not get there. And I'm going to still try to get there, sir, ma'am. Um, anyways, I was saying, you guys, um, uh, Lord Jesus, God bless you all tonight. I'm, I feel the presence of the Lord leaving me. So you know what happens. I'm going to get off of here because then I'll be sounding crazy. Amen. I'll be sounding crazy. And I'm getting ready to drop this music right quick. Amen. Come on, play. So amen. So God bless you all tonight. Y'all have a wonderful evening. I'm going to go in here and chill out. And meditate on this word because I saw some revelation in that word that I just released. So I'm about to go and check it out because I saw something in that. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. Oh, I know what I was saying. Holy Spirit is so smart, ain't it? I was saying my name is Apostle Sonia Green. I am the overseer of the well, which resides, which is a ministry that we have in Detroit. Amen. And I am the author of Deliverance, the Dirty Work of the Church. And the next book I'm working on, which is called At Through the Lives of Absalom. Amen. So y'all be looking for that in a couple of, in probably about three weeks, I should be done with it. And I'm working on two other books. It should be, I should be done with all three of those books in probably about two months. Yes, I'm in the D. Absolutely. I'm in the D. So amen. So God bless you again. This is Apostle Sonia Green, the overseer of the well, an apostolic hub in the city of Detroit. So God bless you all. People arise and come out the cave. Amen. Shalom. Thank you, Lady of Valor. God bless you.